record. All right, levers. You use one of these every single day, multiple of them every single day. But the biggest one that you use is right here. This, your forearm and your elbow is a lever, okay? It's a, it's a type of lever. There are three different types that we're gonna learn about them. Other types of levers, I don't think, I, I think I moved them. Scissors, scissors are a double lever. We got, here's a pivot point, we got one lever, we got two lever, and today you can cut things really, really good. Just kidding. With levers, okay? Now story. Uh, this, this is my favorite. Uh, this is last summer, I helped my brother build a garage. And when they poured the concrete, um, the person sucked at pouring the concrete and dumped all the extra concrete right next to where the pad was. Totally fine, but we had to landscape that. Like we had to get that, con like later on when I was helping him with this, we had to get that concrete out of there. And I was, he was inside at the time and I was like, how am I gonna get, I was like sledgehammering, I was doing everything I could, I was exhausted and I couldn't get this massive, massive, massive chunk of concrete out of there. And so I stopped and I thought, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a smart, I'm a smart dude. I can, I know physics a little bit. Uh, so I got a huge two by four, similar, this isn't a two by four, but I got, where? I got a nice long piece of wood, okay? I put a pivot point, say my calculator, which was actually just another rock. I push down on the far end over here. I push down, put this one underneath the rock, and I was able to actually lift up and move and free that concrete. All from Simple Machine, something that you, you, you know and you love, okay? These things are so incredibly helpful in real life, you have no idea. This is why, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, I'm doing this section of notes, because it's such an important topic and skills to know just to be a human, okay? Um, so, what are they, okay? It is a long bar or ramp, okay, that is free to pivot or turn on a fixed point, okay? Um, the fixed point is called the fulcrum, okay? So if we have a lever here, this one's a little too, I'll use my pencil. This is a bar, a lever, fine, great. My finger is the fulcrum, okay? It's like a teeter-totter. That's all it is. This thing is, is free to move back and forth, back and forth, okay? Those of you who are just joining us, don't worry about it. We're gonna keep going. I'm gonna put this video on YouTube. You haven't missed much at all, so don't worry about it. Um, but this is gonna go on YouTube so you can re-watch re it. Um, we're talking about levers. This is a lever arm, great. This thing is free to move about the fulcrum, okay? Um, you can move the fulcrum. The fulcrum can be over here, the fulcrum can be over here, the fulcrum can be at one end. Uh, it's whatever you want it to be, okay? Um, so you have two, woo, two different things when it comes to levers. You have what's called the effort arm and the output arm. The effort arm is the distance from the fulcrum to where the effort force will be placed. So this is you lifting. The effort force, right? I won't do red, red's an angry color. You lifting or pushing. That's what the effort force is. The input force. You are going bah, pushing it. Okay. The output arm uh, is where the output force is. So this output force is what are you lifting, right? Or moving. What are you moving? Okay. Oh my goodness, it's frozen again. Oh my goodness, not again. Stop mirroring. Sorry about that. There we go. I'll just kind of explain this a little bit again. You got your two different things, right? You've got your effort arm. You've got your effort arm, which is the distance from the fulcrum to where the effort is. And that effort is where you are actually pushing or pulling this lever. So in this case, if I wanted to move, um, let's say, can you see this? There you go. If I wanted to move my iPad right here, so I kind of have my iPad on one end of the lever, I put the fulcrum, my finger right there, and I push down, right? I'm applying the effort force right here to push down and the output force, you can see my iPad moving up and down like that. So the effort um, arm is the distance from the fulcrum 
to where I put the effort in right here, the uh, output arm is from where the fulcrum to where the output is, okay? That's it. I can move this, right? If I move the, my fulcrum over here to where I'm putting the effort, if you notice, even in this little tiny example, I'm pushing down on my, eye, on my pencil. It's, come on. I'm pushing down on my pencil. It's not really doing anything, right? If I move the, the fulcrum more to the middle, now I push down, now I can do a little bit more. But if I move it all the way to the end and I push down, holy smokes, look how easy it is to lift up my, lift up my iPad. That is because all we care about is the ratio from where we're putting the force to, the, to where the fulcrum is versus how far the fulcrum is to where you're getting the force out, okay? That is what a lever is, it's beautiful. Um, so the mechanical advantage, again, output versus input, just like we've been talking about, but it's also the output arm divided by the effort arm, okay? So this output arm is, right, where does the force go? Actually, I won't write that, right? This output arm, where does the force go? The effort arm is you putting in the force, okay? That's it. Again, if you like variables, you could call it DO and DE or something like that. And it doesn't really matter to me. I usually just go out and in. Okay. Now, there are three types of levers. Okay. We're only really going to focus on one, maybe two of them uh, with the math. Um, but, but there are three different types based on where the fulcrum is. Um, and same thing like we were talking about before, levers have a trade-off of distance, just like before. So if we go back to this example of my my pencil, okay, I'm trying to lift my iPad. If I put my fulcrum, I show, ouch, sorry. Right, if I put my fulcrum, I'm gonna use this pencil, this pen now, right? This is right in the middle, which means if I push down, this end, the iPad end, goes up the exact same amount. So I go down, up, they're moving pretty much exactly the same, okay? But if I put this closer to the iPad, and now, like we showed before, I can lift it up much easier. But if you notice, I have to move my Apple Pencil. This is like my finger length <laughs> from the table. Say like, that's say an inch and a half, sure. But the output distance that I get is very, very small. I can move my, I can move my iPad to see that, right? You see this distance here? This is what I'm getting out compared to how far I actually have to push this lever down. And you can be doing this right now with your pencil, literally just like a ruler and a pencil or two pencils, it doesn't really matter. You see that trade-off of distance based on the mechanical advantage, okay? So just always, always be thinking about that trade-off when it comes to mechanical advantage. So this picture, this is a class one, class one lever. Okay, class one is when the fulcrum is between the effort and the output force. So this is a normal seesaw lever like I was just going, beep, 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 beep. okay? You push on one end, the other end lifts something. Um, so if this seesaw, right, if we look at it, if this person pushes down with 10 newtons, okay, they get 80 newtons out, okay? Which means this thing, oops, has a mechanical advantage of eight, okay? which means this distance here, if I call this eight meters, then that means this distance right here is only one meter, right? This is that, this is your effort arm. And this is your output arm but is that hold on a second freeze frame for one second do, do, do. Yeah, I messed that formula up. I can't believe I, I put out a typo. I had this copy and paste thing. Because I looked at that and I was like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Um, so hold on a second. Let me come back to you. 
this, okay, this is very, very important right now. This formula right here is wrong. My bad. It's not super wrong, okay? What it actually is, is your effort arm over your output. Okay, that is your effort over your output. Where is, why can't I see my screen anymore? There we go. Effort over the output, okay? Very, very important. This is what our mechanical advantage is for a, for a lever. Because this effort arm, kind of one way that you can, that you can know that you're doing this right, this effort arm is usually longer than your output. That's how you get a bigger mechanical advantage. You have a longer effort arm, um, which exactly is what this picture is showing, right? If we have an eight meter long effort and a one meter arm output, that means that this is an eight to one mechanical advantage. We are multiplying our force in 10 Newtons by eight. But the trade-off is distance, right? This person has to move the distance one meter down to the ground, but they only get one eighth of a meter coming out, right? They move it eight times as far, but they get out eight times more force. That's the trade off distance versus effort, okay? Cool. That's class one. Class two is when the fulcrum is at one end and the load or that output force where you're lifting something is between the fulcrum and the effort force. So what that looks like is a wheelbarrow. If anybody's seen a wheelbarrow, right? You put it in, you lift it up, and, and away you go. It's easier to lift things. Um, so we're putting, here's our fulcrum on one end, okay? So my pencil, my fulcrum is attached to my hand right here, and it can go like this. Notice how it's not teeter-tottering, it is fixed on one end and it's going up and down, okay? And if I wanna lift something, if I put that right in the middle, somewhere between where I lift and the fulcrum, that is a class two lever like a wheelbarrow. I can lift it up and I can move it, okay? That means, right, your effort arm is still long here, right? Effort arm is still long the entire distance because you're gonna, you're gonna pull up on one end and the fulcrum's on the other, but you're picking up something that's right smack dab in the middle, okay? So your mechanical advantage is not gonna be as great. Um, so let's say that if we put an effort arm of one meter long and an output arm of 0.5, so if we add that effort arm as one meters, this load arm or the output arm is 0.5 meters, okay? The forces, right, if we pull up with, four, we put that four newtons of force in, well then, according to this, right, our mechanical advantage, one over 0.5, our mechanical advantage is gonna be two, okay? Which means if we're putting in eight newt, four newtons, we get out on this load, whatever we're picking up, we can pick up eight newtons of force, so we're doubling it. Notice it's not as good, as a class one, okay? But it still does help, okay? Class three, on the other hand, is a little bit different, okay? Class threes is where the effort is between the load and the fulcrum. So the fulcrum is still on one end, like we saw with the last one, but now, instead of picking up the force um, on the end, we're gonna put the force in the middle. This is our effort. That's our effort force, and this is our output, okay? That is your elbow, okay? Everybody look at your elbow right now, just like I'm doing, okay? There we go, elbow. If this right here is the fulcrum, right? There we go, it's great. When you apply a force, you are applying a force to your muscle tendon that is right here, okay? Your bicep, is pulling your this lever, your forearm up, okay? Now, when that happens, 
whatever we're lifting, let's say we lift my calculator, the load I'm lifting over there, okay? Now, so I'm putting the force here to lift a force over here. That is a class three lever. And if you notice, if you take something, like if you happen to have a longer stick, I'm gonna take this, and if I hold this out a little bit, I will kind of joke up a little bit so you can see. If I hold this out a little bit, and then I try to do the same thing, it's a lot harder when you put weight on the far end because class three levers don't actually help you lift things. Okay, that is a very important distinction. Class three levers do not gain any mechanical advantage. Okay, they, they help you move something a longer distance, but they do not help you hit something or do something more, like they don't give you an advantage. Um, best way to think about that is baseball, right? If you swing a baseball bat, right? And you extend your arms out and the baseball bat is extended out from your arms, okay? You are being able to contact that ball for a much longer time, apply a much greater force for a long, play this, play, apply a force on that ball for a much longer time. But if you think about a T-Rex who has little short little T-Rex arms and holds a baseball bat, right? That T-Rex can only do this, right? Instead of a big old baseball swing, okay? That would, you can, if you just, I, I encourage you to go out later today, grab a stick or something and throw things at each other um, and try and play baseball, right? Try to play baseball with it tight into your chest where you're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus extending it out and swinging full. You will be able to hit it much, much far, further if you extend it out because you are increasing the distance, okay? When I swing a baseball, if you notice, my elbows don't move that much, right? My elbows are only going from like here to here, like that. But if you notice the, the apple pencil, my baseball bat is going much, much further. Um, so we're increasing the distance like crazy, okay? We will only do mathematical examples with class one and two, okay? You need to know the theory behind each one, but I will. we're only gonna do math with, with class one and two, okay? So super quick example of a lever. Uh, we've got a seesaw. We've got a five meter total length seesaw. Fulcrum is 0.5 meters from one end. What is the mechanical advantage of the seesaw? So if we want to draw this thing, here's our seesaw. We know that this entire length is five meters. That's great. Um, our fulcrum is sitting 0.5 meters away from one end. So there's our fulcrum right there, okay? Which means this distance here, from here to here, is 0 0.5, and from here to here, must be 4.5, because it's a five meter seesaw, okay? This is where we are putting the effort, right? This is our F in, which is our effort, okay? What we get out, happens over here, that's our output, okay? Um, if we wanna know what the mechanical advantage is, remember it is the effort arm divided by the output arm. With levers, you can add arm to it if you really, really want, right? Effort arm over output, which means it must be 4.5 over 0.5, which means this thing has a mechanical advantage of nine. It's a huge mechanical advantage, okay? You could lift nine times as much force, okay? The other way to know that you're doing this right, you expect this lever to make a bigger mechanical advantage. Don't write this down or don't really pay attention here. Why is my, come on, there we go. Um, right, if you, if you divided 0 0.5 divided by 4.5, like if you flipped it like this, you'd get a small number. That's not helpful at all. That is not a mechanical advantage, so that is no good, right? You always want a bigger number, usually, like 99% of the time, okay? And so if we wanna look at some force here, if a person jumps on the long end with a force and applies a force of 300 Newtons, what output force? So again, our picture, okay? Their picture is exactly the same here, just like so. But now we are putting in Okay, our effort force is 300 Newtons, and we wanna know what is our output. 
okay? So our mechanical advantage, which we said is your output force divided by your input force, okay? Um, which means with this mechanical advantage of nine, we wanna know what we get out of it and we are putting in 300 Newtons, which implies multiply that together, our output force is gonna be 2,700 Newtons. That is a huge output force for a very, very little 300 Newton force put in. Good, cool, that's it. That's about as much as you're gonna do with levers, okay? But they're super, they're super important. Next thing is you got something stuck, grab a long piece of wood, right? Put a fulcrum close to it, push down, and away you go. Make sure the piece of wood is strong. When I was doing, when I was lifting that concrete boulder, I almost snapped a two by four uh, because you're putting an insane amount of force on that lever. So if you are making like a legitimate lever to lift something heavy, it has to be able to withstand the force that you're gonna lift, right? Whatever the seesaw is, it better be able to withstand 2,700 newtons because that's what it's gonna be pushing out, okay? Cool, levers, done, check. Let's move on to wheel and axles, okay? Um, these ones are, again, used everywhere. Um, it's, it's, these ones are kind of pretty straightforward, um, but a wheel, essentially what a wheel and axle is, is saying if you've got a big wheel, big wheels keep on turning, proud Mary, good. Big wheel, okay, and your axle, okay? If you think about a car, You've got the axle going in the wheel. The axle turns once, okay? The wheel turns once, okay? Good, but if you notice, right, this thing has a bit much bigger radius. Great, so bigger radius, one turn, this thing is gonna go much, much further. We can demonstrate that by literally just rolling this thing across, okay? I'm gonna keep my pencil on here just so you know when we've done a full, you know, full circle okay so we're gonna go to, actually that's gonna be hard let's do let's put a line can you see that line i don't know if you can see the line but i can okay we do one full circle we're gonna start here there's our starting point okay we're gonna go do 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 and we're gonna go off this pretty much off the screen. Nope, there we go. Okay, I'll mark it with my AirPod case. Right there, okay? So see one rotation, this wheel, this big wheel goes from here to here. My Apple Pencil, much, much smaller. We started here, we can even give it a little bit of a head start here. I'm not gonna put pencil on my Apple Pencil because that would just be a crime. Um, but I will promise you that I will watch it do one rotation. Here we go. We're gonna go one, Boom, boom. That was one rotation. We got to there. So notice, right, the distance is bigger wheel, bigger radius, you went a lot further, okay? So that we can use this to our advantage by attaching a wheel and an axle, by turning this little axle once, one rotation. We turn the big wheel once, but we go a huge distance, okay? That's a wheel and axle. So if we wanted to calculate the mechanical advantage of that, um, all you're doing is you're comparing the radiuses, the radii, I don't know, okay? You're looking at the wheel, right? This wheel, which is the big one, and the axle, which is the small one. And you are just comparing that and that gives you the rate, the mechanical advantage. There's nothing crazy about that. But if any of you fish, Okay, if any of you like to fish or have ever fished and you can picture like winding up the fishing rod, um, you notice how the lever that or the like kind of the crank on, on the fishing rod, it, it makes a bigger circle. That's a wheel and an axle. You turn that big crank once, that is making the little tiny spindle inside turn a whole bunch of times. Right. If we were to look at the distance here, I kind of moved it now. Right. But we we had a distance of like here to here. What is that? One, two, three, four. Let's say just say five times further. This thing turns five times further here, which means then the pencil. So if you crank this wheel once, 
this thing is going to turn five times. And if you're fishing, that's a huge advantage. Okay. So that, right. And that exists everywhere. Your power steering in your car is a wheel and axle. You turn the car once and you, it, everything is gone and you, you get a huge mechanical advantage in your car just by using a wheel and axle and comparing the radiuses. Okay. So an example, right. The math here, not anything to write home about. We've got a larger wheel, 20 centimeter wheel that's attached to a smaller four centimeter axle. If you want to draw a picture, great, right? Here is a nice big wheel with this little axle coming out like this, right? That radius is 20. This radius is four, which means the mechanical advantage of this system, right? Wheel over axle, 20 over four, it's five. Pretty much exactly like what we did here, right? You turn this once, this turns once, but you, or, or sorry, you turn, you turn this once, this thing turns five times. That's pretty much it is. You turn this once, you get to cover five times as much distance. That's it. Okay. Uh, but we can look at forces. If you attach string to these wheels, okay, so I'm going to actually have some string. Bear with me one second. I got this, this, here we go. Right? If I were to attach string to this little wheel here, like so, okay, there we go. And if I were to attach a much, much bigger crank arm to this, like let's say I could crank this thing out in a massive circle. As I crank this thing, right, if I crank with a certain number of force, that multiplier is going to put a way more force on this, right? I can lift much, much heavier things just by increasing the radius of the wheel that I'm turning. So in this case, right, if I am rotating this wheel with 10 Newtons, remember our mechanical advantage is always going to be our output over our input. So we have a mechanical advantage of five. We, are, we want to know how much output force we get. We're pushing with 10 Newtons. That tells us that we have an output force of 50 Newtons. It's just a multiplier. That's all mechanical advantage is, a multiplier, okay? Cool. Uh, part C, pretty much exactly the same thing, but now we wanna know what's the minimum minimum force, okay? We've got a, we got a hand crank on a large wheel with a rope that's attached to a bucket, a well. This is what it is, right? This is also known as, also known as an old, school well big hole in the ground with a bucket and a crank that's what it is right and if our bucket weighs 24 25 kilograms that means the force of gravity 25 times 9.81 right i did that calculation before but now i can't find it 25 i'll do it on my calculator quit 25 times 9.81 this gives us the force of gravity to be 245.25 Newtons. That is what we need out, right? We need this as our output force because we need to be able to lift that, uh, which means if we take our mechanical advantage of five, we have our output force divided by our input force we have five is going to be equal to, come on, 245.25 divided by Fn. Switch places, divide it by five. We need to put an input force, divide that by five, do, 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 of 49 Newtons. Okay? With 49 Newtons or the equivalent divided by 9.81. 49 Newtons is the equivalent of five pounds, right? So you put five pounds on one end, you can lift 25 pounds because we have a multiplier of five. That's it. Cool. Okay. If you've noticed the pattern, good. This is all just a pattern. It's all about mechanical advantage. It's a multiplier. It's how these simple machines help us. Okay. Yes, calculating like slightly different for different ones based on lever and effort and arms and stuff, incline planes, how much you're pulling up, uh, 
axles, wheels, um, radius is fine. But it's just a mechanical advantage that always compares your output to your input. Okay, that's it. That is it. Okay, so before we jump into pool, to pulleys, let me see again. You're probably getting sick of this. Are you feeling any better? Okay, are you feeling any better or did I just make things worse? <laughs> Hey, I didn't make things worse. That's good for me. Usually I make things worse. I'm happy. That's good. Okay, fantastic. So then let's let's jump forward. We'll do pulleys, my absolute favorite. Um, pulleys are fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, so, yeah, we're just gonna do pulleys and that's it. But pulleys are exactly the same as, as everything else, except you just gotta count a little bit different. Um, so yeah, make sure you watch the video if, you, if you're not understanding something. Um, cool. And this pull, pull. All right, pulleys. Pulleys are fantastic. Did anybody watch I posted, so I posted you a video, like a bunch of videos of each thing. And then I gave you a little text. And at the end I said, here's another pulley video. It's long, but it's fantastic. Did anybody watch that one? I, I'm gonna guess nobody watched it, which is totally fine. Um, you should watch it. That person is so incredibly passionate about pulleys. It's hilarious, but pulleys are so cool. You can do, amazing amazing things with pulleys like things that would just blow your mind and i'm hoping that we're you're going to be able to kind of recreate some of that at home with just basic materials um my screen is frozen i get it i get it i get it i get it so pulleys they are fantastic all a pulley is is a wheel that allows rope to pass freely around it it for our sake, it doesn't even have to be a we uh, like a wheel. It can just be some type of cylindrical object. This is a bottle of off. You take your rope, you hook it around here, like so. The rope is free to slide, right? Now you have a pulley. If I were to take this rope, tie the one end. To this tape, drape it around the pulley. Come on, like so. There we go. I'll move out of the way so you can see the string. There we go. I pull down on this end. Look at that, the wheel goes up. Oh my goodness. That right there is a pulley. It's fantastic. Okay. Now there are what <laughs> okay. So if if you watch the if you watch the video, which you should. The long one. Uh, the guy was talking about a snatch block, okay? Which is, uh, yeah, it's a snatch block. Um, that is a type of pulley. It's more of, I think it's a brand to be totally honest with you. Um, kind of like Kleenex is a brand of just tissue, but everyone says, says Kleenex. A snatch block is just a pulley. It's a really heavy duty pulley that, that people use in construction and, and stuff like that. Um, but if you watch it, he's like, it's like an ad for a snatch block. He loves them. Um, so, Pulleys, there's two different types, okay? There are fixed pulleys and movable pulleys. A fixed pulley by itself cannot, cannot add an advantage, okay? And a fixed pulley, if you guessed it, is stuck. This thing right here is stuck. A fixed pulley is exactly what I just did, right? This is attached right here to my arm or the roof or something like that. I pull up and down, great, okay? It changes the direction of force. I pull down, the object goes up. I pull down, object goes up. But it does not add an advantage by itself. A movable pulley is a pulley that is that moves with the load. Okay, and so a good example of this, and for me, I'm just going to use a carabiner. If you have these at home, you're going to need these, so I'd go find them. Um, okay, this right here is it can be a movable pulley. So if I take this 
and I put this on here now, right? Actually, I'm gonna have to hook this. Let's see, do, do, do. This tape might be too big. Let's lift, let's be dangerous. Oh yeah, what is science without a little bit of danger? Let's lift some scissors. I'm just gonna move my iPad out of the way just in case. Here we go, we're gonna lift some scissors. So this carabiner is now acting as a fixed, as a movable pulley, okay? But how these things work is one end of the string has to be attached, okay? So I'm gonna attach it to my hand by wrapping it around a couple times. So this hand is not moving. But this one, if I pull up, notice how the scissors go up? Because the pulley is moving. Yes, the string is moving through the pulley, but it's not, and the pulley's moving, but there's nothing really else, but this arm, this fixed end isn't moving, okay? Fixed, fixed string moving pulley versus a pulley that is fixed to the, fixed to the ceiling, okay? A movable pulley, by itself already has a mechanical advantage of two, okay? And that is because if I bring back my movable pulley like so, okay, here we go. If we think about dynamics, right? How many tensions are holding up this, these scissors right now? There's one rope and there's two ropes, which means these two ropes together hold up the scissors, okay? So the weight of the scissors is split between our two ropes. So when I'm pulling with this hand, when I pull up, I only have to pull with half the weight of the scissors because it's split evenly between these two ropes. It's amazing, just by doing absolutely nothing. You can move this thing up and down and up and down and up, it's, and it's amazing. So imagine what you can do if you put together multiple pulleys. Like it's amazing. It's amazing what you can do. Okay. Um, I would strongly suggest your homework as soon as we're done this class, you are going to watch this video. Scan this code. Okay. Watch this video. This is somebody who needs to remove a tree from their yard. And how do they do it? They hook up a. Oh, sorry. My screen's frozen. I'm just so excited. I'm sorry. This is just like. This is my, oh, I'm, I'm amped up right now, ready to go, okay? You are going to watch this video. Scan this code with your, with your phone. You're gonna watch this video, okay? You don't have to watch all of it. It's 10 minutes long. Um, you can kind of skip through, you'll get the idea. This is a person who needs to remove a tree from their yard and does it with pulleys and a track and a, and a quad. Actually, not even, I don't even think it's a quad. I think it's like a riding lawnmower. He pulls a tree out with a riding lawnmower because he hooks up a whole whack load of pulleys, you'll see in the video, a million pulleys back and forth and creates a 45 to one advantage so that he pulls with one Newton of force, he can pull the tree out with that times 45 Newtons. So if, if you think about a, a riding lawnmower pulling this way, say 500, 500 times 45, that is a massive, insane amount of, of strength to be able to pull with. It's so cool, watch it. One thing you'll notice from this video though, is that his ropes are super strong and he's got cables and chains and stuff. Because if you think about that, there is an insane amount of tension on that system, on the rope. So you need to make sure your ropes can handle it, okay? There's a lot of safety when it comes to with pulleys. You never wanna be standing in the way if a cable snaps, you don't want that recoil to come back and smack you because that, that will destroy you. Okay, so you always want to be standing clear when you're doing crazy stuff with pulleys like this. Okay, so the mechanical advantage of pulleys is just about looking at it. There's no fancy formula. There's nothing else. You just look at it and you count how many supporting ropes there are in a system. Okay, um, a system of pulleys is called a block and tackle. Okay, I don't really know why. It just is. Okay, I think if we look at this. This is one block, this is the other block, you tack them together, you get a pulley system. I don't know, I just made that up, okay? But they're called a block and tackle when you have more than one pulley, okay? So if we look at this one, okay? We have two fixed pulleys, 
right here and two movable pulleys. And if we follow the ropes, right, there's arrows here, we are lifting up this 10 kilogram object, which means all of the force that this thing needs to lift up with is going up like this. And the ropes, we have one rope, we have two ropes, we have three ropes, and we have four ropes, which means this mechanical advantage, I'll just write it a little bit bigger, is four because there are four ropes. That's it, okay? You have to be careful though, not all ropes you see in a system will actually add an advantage. Um, if we look down here, okay, notice how, sure, there, you might wanna say that there's one, two ropes, but this is the same rope. This is not adding any advantage. When you pull here, that moves up, there is just one rope supporting it. But as soon as you loop it around a movable pulley right here, now you have one, two. Again, this third rope, no, no, no. That doesn't do anything. You just have your two ropes there. So this has a mechanical advantage of two. Okay, so just be very, very careful when you count ropes. That's literally all you do. Um, but, okay, so your mechanical advantage, so if you want to lift up 10 kilograms, I'm getting a phone call. I will call them back later. Um, 10 kilograms, right? Mechanical advantage of four, that means we only have to pull down with a force of 2.5 newtons. That's all, it's the same mechanical advantage, exactly the same thing, okay? The trade-off with pulleys though, same thing, distance, right? If you have a mechanical advantage of four, you have to, right? You have to pull four times as far. So if we let's if we just look at this picture, right? This has a mechanical advantage of one. So you pull down with 100 newtons, and if you move it 10 centimeters, you get 10 centimeters of lift, one for one. You're not all this pulley is doing is changing directions. This is not a mechanical advantage. Changes directions, yes, but does not help us. This one has a mechanical advantage of two. So when you pull it with 50 newtons, you have two ropes of 50 newtons right there, which means you get out 100 newtons, but you have to move it. If you pull with 20 centimeters, you only get 10 centimeters of lift. Mechanical advantage of two. You guessed it, if we go on, here are our ropes, right? If we wanna lift with 100 newtons, this 100 newtons is split between one, two, three ropes, Again, if we wanna lift this 10 centimeters, we have to pull it 30 centimeters because we're, we're gaining, we don't have to do as much work, but we have to pull it much, much further, okay? And this just keeps going. We got four ropes here now. One, two, three, four ropes right there. If you pull it 40 centimeters, yes, your force is cut in half, but you're only moving it 10 centimeters because you have to pull it 40 centimeters. And we can see this even just with my simple little, um, what's the, what's this, is there a slang word for like cheap or something like that? I don't know, right? If, if we look at this system, right? Watch how much my hand moves compared to how much the scissors move, right? I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you can really tell, but I'm pretty sure that I am pulling twice as far then the scissors are moving. I'm going from the top of my head to the top of the screen, and the scissors are going from halfway to the top, or to, the, to my head, right? It's a trade-off, it's a mechanical advantage of two. That's it, pulleys are so, so cool, okay? So you need to do, you're gonna do an experiment, okay? You need three people, so two more people, okay? And what you need is a couple brooms. Or just or like hockey sticks, or but brooms are fine. The hockey stick and a broom, fine. Okay, so I put the instructions here. But what you're going to do, I'm by myself. I can't do this. Um, but what you're going to do, you have person one hold broom. Okay, person hold broom. Okay, this is person. I'll say that person one, person two. Okay, so you have two people holding the brooms, fine. Holding them straight out 
we'll pretend like my hands are two different people and you're holding the brooms out straight like this, okay? Parallel to the floor, great. You're gonna take a nice sturdy rope, okay? You're gonna tie that rope to one broom. So, let me get my trusty dusty thing over here, okay? So you're gonna tie this rope to one of the brooms like so. There we go, tied, okay? Then you are going to take it, you are going to loop it around like so, and you're gonna pull, okay? So notice how it's going around the broom. I'll kind of show you the side, going around the broom, and you're gonna pull. This is really hard to do by myself, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, you're gonna pull this, the people holding the brooms have to keep the, they, you don't want the brooms to touch, okay? You want to make the brooms touch, but they don't, they don't want it. So they're going to hold it super tight and you're going to see how much force you have to pull with in order to make the brooms touch, okay? Then after that one, you're going to loop, instead of just looping it around once, you're going to go back, loop it around, maybe loop it around a couple more times. So now if you notice, it's almost like I'm kind of weaving this back and forth like so, okay? weaving back and forth, now you're gonna pull. And now I want you to see how, what that does. And if you have long enough rope, rope it or loop it around a couple more times, okay? And then pull, see what happens, okay? Ah! I just dropped my apple pencil. And the lid went flying off, but it didn't break, so we're all good, woo! Okay? I'll give you a hint, you're making a pulley, okay? When you loop it around once, you have a mechanical advantage of one, two, mechanical advantage, okay? So the more times you loop it around, guess what's gonna happen? Just do it, it's gonna be so much fun, I promise, okay? If you have like a younger brother or someone who thinks that they're stronger than you, or maybe an older brother or, or just someone who thinks they're stronger, better than you, bet them money, that's what you should do. You should be like, hey, I'll bet you like 10 bucks or make it interest 100 bucks that I can't make these brooms touch or something like that, I don't know and then just make it, wrap it around a bunch of time and go, pew. oh, it'll be great, it'll be great. Okay, try it, so much fun, okay? So how do we use this? Couple quick examples of using pulleys, okay? Thinking about supported ropes, okay? So looking at this one, right? We are gonna pull, this is going to be our effort force, okay? That's what we're putting in, okay? Which means, Now, which, right, if we are pulling up, this right here, if we ignore all of this, I'm gonna do this and this, okay? If we ignore all of this, this is just like the scissor system, right? It has a mechanical advantage of two because we have one supporting rope. Oops, I don't want white, I want green. We have one supporting rope, we have two supporting ropes, but look at that, it keeps going. We have three supporting ropes, four support, supporting ropes, five report, supporting ropes, six ropes. So six ropes in total, which means it has a mechanical advantage of six. It's just that easy. That's it, okay? So how much do we have to pull with if we wanna lift 150 kilograms? We need an output force of 150 times 9.81. Right, so it's an output force. We take this 150, 150 times 9.81, okay, and we get 1471.5. Okay, now I, I, I know it's kind of confusing about the first rope, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't love this picture even just looking at it. If this rope just went this way, then it doesn't count because you're not pulling up. But if you, if you pull upwards, then it's gonna count because you are actually lifting this up. You're actually supporting it a little bit, okay? Um, like thinking about, I took it apart now, but thinking about our pulley, our scissor example, right? It had two ropes, one from me pulling it and then going up, right? If I pulled it sideways, this was gonna do absolutely nothing. As long as you're pulling it upwards, then it's, then it's gonna count, okay? But this picture, not the, best, not the best picture, okay? So it does have a mechanical advantage of six, okay? Which means six 
is going to be out versus in, which means we have to pull with 1471.5 divided by 6. Again, it's just some ratios. Divide that by 6, 245.25 newtons. That's it, right? We don't have to lift up almost 1,500 newtons. We only have to lift up with 245. That's fantastic, okay? Pulleys, so good. So, so good, okay? Question three, what's the tension in the string if the weight is 15 kilograms? Well, looking at this, right? This rope right here doesn't support. It's not a supporting rope, so it does not count, okay? This is a better picture. This is a more uh, um, a, a picture that you're going to see over and over again. This is much better because you can see, all right, well, this rope supports it. I don't know why I started there. This rope supports it, this rope supports it, and that rope supports it, which means this thing has a mechanical advantage of three. Okay, um, so a mechanical advantage of three tells us that now we could even do this with um, you can do this with mass, but since we're asking about tension, um, we know that the weight or the, sorry, the, the output force here, we need to be 15 times 9.81. We're looking at that force of gravity a lot with this stuff, right? So 15 times 9.81 is going to give us 147.15 Newtons. Divide that, right? Our mechanical advantage of three gives us our output force of 147.15, our input force, divide that, our input force, the tension, the applied force, all the same thing, divided by three, you get 49 newtons. It's just a helper, it's just a, just a multiplier, okay? That's it, that's all this stuff is, okay, cool. This is a really cool thing. If we were in class, I would do this. You can actually lift yourself up with pulleys. It's super cool. So imagine this person is on this platform and the, they weigh 600 Newtons. So they have to lift 600 Newtons. We need an output force here of 600 Newtons. We wanna know how much do you have to actually pull with. Now, this might be a hard example, a hard thing to see, but we are pulling down right here. That is where we pull, okay? And if we follow the rope up, we have one supporting rope loops around the pulley. We have two supporting ropes. We have three supporting ropes and we have four supporting ropes, which means this thing has a mechanical advantage of four, which means this input force, we only need to lift with one fourth. We only need to lift with 150 Newtons in order to lift ourselves up. You can do this. I am hopefully going to do this next year if we're back in class, build something in the physics lab. It's going to be super cool. But that is the beauty of physics and pulleys. It's so cool. You can just leave me lift up so much weight without doing anything. Okay. This question, I'm not going to lie. Let's just skip it. It's exactly the same. It's literally exactly the same. The answer, what you have to pull with, is 19.95 newtons or 20 newtons that's the answer it's exactly the same thing i'm not gonna lie okay you count the ropes one two three ropes advantage there you go and that is pulleys they're so much fun they're so cool you are going to do a lab with them tomorrow i've been trying to play with it i've got you'll laugh i've got a got my nice broom sticking out here my place is a mess but i've on my broom trying to make like a nice at home pulley system um if you have carabiners great um you might want to start finding them you're going to need them tomorrow uh if you want to go out and buy some pulleys from canadian tire they're super cheap they're like two three bucks for the little skinny ones fine you can um but you don't have to um you're going to be doing a lot more with pulleys uh pulleys tomorrow and an actual hands-on thing okay which is going to be super duper fun um so how are we doing I don't really want to talk anymore. I feel like I've talked too much. I'm going to stop this recording.